August 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 from the New Testament. So when we could bear it no longer, we decided to stay on in Athens alone. We sent Timothy, our brother and fellow worker for God in the gospel of Christ, to strengthen you and encourage you about your faith, so that no one would be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are destined for this. For in fact, when we were with you, we were telling you in advance that we would suffer affliction, and so it has happened, as you well know. So when I could bear it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith, for fear that the tempter somehow tempted you and our toil had proven useless. But now Timothy has come to us from you and given us the good news of your faith and love, and that you always think of us with affection and long to see us just as we also long to see you. So in all our distress and affliction, we were reassured about you, brothers and sisters, through your faith. For now we are alive again, if you stand firm in the Lord. For how can we thank God enough for you, for all the joy we feel because of you, before our God? We pray earnestly night and day to see you in person, and make up what may be lacking in your faith. Now may God, our Father himself, and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we do for you, so that your hearts are strengthened in holiness to be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. God, in, in writing this letter, Paul says so many amazing, powerful things. Uh, but one of the things that he said today um, kind of stuck in my heart, and I was thinking a lot about our church service this last weekend. He talks about Timothy, that he sent, sent him, who is our brother, our fellow worker for God, in the gospel of Christ. Here's why I sent him. And part of it was the Thessalonians were disappointed that Paul didn't come to them. Uh, they were hoping to see Paul, and their disappointment in seeing Timothy instead required Paul to shore them up that uh, he wasn't sending second best, that Timothy knew what he was doing. But we do that a lot in our church, as well as our Christian world. We elevate certain people higher than others. Um, our lead pastor at the church I go to is amazing. Every time he talks, I just learn so much and uh, it's just overwhelming and I have pages and pages of notes and I just get so excited when I know he's going to be preaching on Sunday. I can tell my heart's not right because when he's not preaching, I'm not as engaged. And that's ridiculous because I know you can use anyone to talk to me, God, anytime, any place. And if... Um, a, a different pastor or somebody else is speaking in our church, my heart should still be open to those opportunities. Uh, last weekend, one of the people um, who preached is somebody who doesn't preach a lot. Um, she hasn't had an opportunity to do a lot of, of sermons. And I also struggle with the fact on top of it that, and this is not doctrinally based, this is not something that we should argue about, but just personally, I really struggle with, with women being preachers. Um, and that's just me, God, I know, but <laughs> I struggle with that. So here it is a Sunday and um, my favorite pastor isn't preaching. Uh, a girl is preaching. So in this case, it'd be like a secondary, like Timothy. And on top of it, it's a female. And so I have all these walls that went up as soon as I walked through the doors. And amazingly, it was one of the best sermons that spoke so purely to my heart that I've heard in a long time. I am still sifting through all of the information that you showed me that day. And here's what's kind of scary. After reading this chapter about Timothy, and, well, Paul having to talk about Timothy, I wonder how much I missed on Sunday. Like if I got that much with those walls up, with that kind of filters of I'll half listen, if I learned that much with those filters, what would happen if I just was fully accepting of everybody who came into my life and the potential for them to share information that you have for me? So I've been admonished and <laughs> now I need to go back and listen to the sermon when it gets posted uh, to catch everything that was being said, but it was, it was so powerful. So we do the same thing with, you know, our favorite Christian writers, our favorite Christian, um, 
authors who might be on Facebook, our favorite Christian singers. And it's almost like we are elevating them higher, just like the Thessalonians are so impressed with Paul that they just wanted him to come back. And there's there's definitely a level of, there's certain people that I understand better. Um, Spurgeon, Piper, um, Francis Chan. I'm trying to think of all the authors I read. And, and there's a lot of other people out there who biblically I just don't agree with. And so I, I put them aside. And so that discernment does need to be there. Um, and that's why Paul so carefully said he is our brother and fellow worker for God in the gospel of Christ. He has my stamp of authority. More importantly, he has God's stamp of authority. And so even though we need discernment when listening to people to make sure that they're biblically on track, even unsaved people have shared with me things that I know they were sent to me from you, God. And I think we need to be careful about putting those filters in our life of this person can't teach me anything. This person can't show me anything because they are not the head honcho pastor in our church or they're not the person that I always listen to. God, I know that you just speak volumes into our life every single day. And the more that I have worked on listening for your voice, the more the blessings have just come in where I have all of these great conversations with you that I never, I would have completely missed before. And it looks based upon this chapter I just read that I'm missing other parts. <laughs> I'll have to work on that. Um, but it's just incredible to me how much you carry on conversations with us all day long and invite us to participate in that relationship. God, I pray for people who aren't hearing your voices clearly yet, that you just encourage and strengthen them to continue working on it. I know that you're speaking to them as well. Um, allow them to remove those filters of how they think you should speak to them or what you should say. Uh, and just allow those opportunities for anyone to come into their life and just speak truth into it. God, I get so excited when, when people work on their relationships with you and, and it strengthens them and they go out and do exciting things for you. It's just a truly amazing opportunity in this world. And, and we get to see a lot of Timothy in Paul's letters, his character, his struggles, uh, his strength that he received from you. And we can see that in a lot of different people if we would just take off those filters. God, thank you for amazing communications with us that you so seek constantly a relationship and a continuous conversation with us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.